Here we are. Are we here? Yes, can you hear us, Ludwig? Yes, we can yes. hear you. Mm -hmm. Esther? Yes, welcome all. My companion moderator. Hello, Hello. Let's wait, wait. I think 30 seconds is fair until everybody is there. So every speaker can do a mic check. Yes, it's fine. Check, check. Check, check, check. Check, check, check. So, how many people made it to our session, Shenya? Not, no, not Shenya, Esther now. I'm, I'm getting mixed up with all my ladies here. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> how many people are there we have? I think 30, 34 attendees, actually 35 by now, and 10 presenters. You can see it in the yes. chat. So, let's start. Esther, we said that you start. Yes, because <laughs> I noticed that you were not properly introduced in, uh, really? in the first session. So, let me tell you who Ludwig is. Ludwig Park <laughs> is from the member state Germany. He works for over 30 years in sustainability, digital and energy business. He owns the Baun consulting firm and he has a strong interest in the environment and renewable energy. He's a trusted partner for governments and local authorities for developing plans for energy transition. You didn't tell me that you say that. Uh, at least you didn't tell me that you say something about the 30 years, but but still. <laughs> Uh, you own them. You, 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 you deserve you, I introduce you. Uh, what I noted down for you, uh, you have been in this business less than I, and you are, you are heading also an organization in the Netherlands uh, that does real practical work, uh, that brings uh, renewable energy to the grid and brings the people to these renewable energies. So this is excellent work you have been doing and you are still doing in the Netherlands and you headed one of the working groups. I don't know exactly why you don't do that again, again anymore. Is, is that because there is a term that elapsed or how was that? Yes, only three years. You have to rotate to get everybody the chance to chair the working groups. So, okay. yes. So, but I'm still anyway, mad. the two of us try to, to moderate that one. Uh, what we will do, this is a difficult exercise. We have invited representatives from five projects uh, and these representatives will have the task to present their projects in 99 seconds each. Uh, and then we have more questions. We have a, a set of questions and we have a lively panel discussion. Uh, and on the panel, uh, two people will join us. Anna Maria Sanchez Infante and Jan Roschek. So they should have the first say. I think uh, they should be introduced first, and I think you can best introduce yourself. Uh, and we play the game. Uh, you have 99 seconds. Anna, okay. is it fair that in this case, ladies first? I don't know if this is an honor to you, but. You I are first. <laughs> 99 seconds. I, I, yes. I start a counter, but I don't show it. <laughs> don't worry. I will be quick. <laughs> Good morning to everybody. My name is Anna Sanchez. Uh, as Ludwig correctly, correctly presented me, I'm a policy officer at DG Energy, and I'm working in the Renewables Energy and Energy System Integration Policy Unit. Uh, I'm uh, actively covering the five renewable energy communities, so I'm very uh, happy to participate in this panel and uh, looking forward to the questions and also to give some input on our current work at the Commission. Thank you very much. That was much faster than 99 seconds. Leaves us some space for Jan Roschek. Please introduce yourself. Thanks very much. My name is Jan Roschek. I'm leading business development and strategic partnerships at Greencom Networks. I'm a member as well of the ATPS Network Group for Digitalization and Customer Participation. And as you know, we are focusing mainly on the overarching arching architecture, 
the data information system management now linking it as well to Jaya X. Of course, never ending story, cybersecurity, standardization, and interoperability. And of course, and that's the focus here for this uh, workshop, customer engagement and participation. In all 410 selected um, use cases from our area, we have now embedded um, the um, participation engagement models in our, let's say, research and solution areas. And in the big um, idea, which has been um, shown by Jan Oko already, one-stop shop, the universal access uh, platform for customers and citizens to access information and give them choosing options for energy services, we can learn how these engagement models can fit. Yeah. One advice which we have learned so far is on our digital journey, we must carefully not to foster and forget uh, uh, the digital divide so that nobody will be left behind when we are kicking in digital uh, solutions and services, which not all citizens in Europe can maybe participate because they don't have the tool, tools or not the next network access for that. So I'm very much looking forward to our discussions here. So you will not only present your ideas, but you will help us asking the right questions to our panelists from, from the projects. But first of all, uh, Esther, we would like to learn a bit more about the people that we have here, right? You, you counted them, was it 40 or something? We have prepared a Slido. Uh, can we start the Slido? People, you, you know how to get there? Yeah. You click on the top, you, you select the parallel session four, and you get the first question. Which sector are you from? Yeah, some made it. Interesting, but not too many participate, right, Esther? Yeah, I think we, we have to wait so that everybody puts in their code and yeah. in to make sure that we are all, all, all on board. Maybe while, while you are doing that, some, uh, some rules of the game. Uh, we have these panelists and we have many of those and, and we have uh, little time, but we still collect uh, your inputs from the chat. So we, we follow the chat and if we feel like it contributes to better understanding, we bring it to the panel. Uh, and if we feel like it could be answered by some panelists directly, please also check and, and answer directly. Uh, and we will store the chat uh, and we will definitely relay the chat to the people that can answer so it's not lost and mainly these workshops also are there to give input to the ETIP to the bridge and everybody so please let us know why are the chat what you have to tell us it's not going to be lost even if we cannot discuss it now yes so more or less we have university and others I would be curious what others mean but we have everything technology research right Esther we are yes. pretty, pretty, much, pretty much balanced. And where are you from? Can, can we see where you where this part of the group is from? Can we get to the next one? The Austrians. The Austrians are here. The Spanish, the Germans. Okay. That looks nice. That looks good. So sort of spread. We have Central Europe, uh, yeah. Southern Europe, the Netherlands. Where where are the Scandinavians? They are waiting for the Scandinavian regional workshop, right? Yes, this is the main thing.
Okay, let's go ahead. And what what are you doing when you do not follow us in the regional workshop of ETIP? Which research or activity area are you in? Oh, ah, yeah. So? We attracted the right people, is there? Yes. Consumer, yes. prosumer, citizen, energy community. But they already know that the consumer and prosumer okay. is very important in the energy system. <laughs> we can shut down. We, we can stop the session. Everybody knows. No, you don't. Let's go. It's good enough. We have five projects selected uh, and we will ask the representatives and you see them here. You, you can see them. Is there? Yes, I am. Yes, sharing that. Yeah. I, can, I can see. We run one after the other. Yes, and we start with Jerry, Jerry Koseman, and he's from Brussels. And he's a professor at the Vrije Universiteit van Brussel at the Department of Electrical Engineering and Energy Technology. And at the same time, he's a director research team on sustainable energy communities. Please, Jerry. Hello, good morning. You are the role model, Jerry, now. I have a role 99 model. 99 seconds. Can you do that in 99 seconds? No way. You didn't mention Belgium, so I have to take revenge now. <laughs> nah, you, get, you get one second extra. <laughs> <laughs> so much. Okay. Um, so you guys share the slides, right? So hello, everybody. I'm uh, Thierry Kozmas. I'm um, managing, coordinating the Renaissance uh, Horizon 2020 project. Uh, basically, this project started in 2019 and it's basically all about designing an energy community starting either from scratch or from a brownfield or every kind of every level of maturity towards full implementation. Important for the project is that we engage stakeholders right from the beginning, not only consumers, but all stakeholders, the whole ecosystem. Um, so how does it basically work? We go to a site or a community that we are losing the presentation now. Anyway, a community that wants to build an, um, an energy community, analyze the situation, not only in terms of resources, assets and so forth, but also works models of collaboration, uh, business models that could be applicable there. Then we design it. Uh, not only from a technical point of view, but also from a business point of view, from an ecosystem point of view. We integrated hardware, software and so forth. We test it in different sites and we validate our design models. Um, we do this in real life in four sites in Europe, in Holland, Spain, Greece and Belgium, all with a totally different DNA, I would say different kind of energy. Until to, um, to, to university students. That's it. I uh, That's my it. time. Okay. Look! Look what? <laughs> Excuse me. Have you seen it? You have one second left. It's interesting. Uh, my son is a psychologist, and he told me that everybody has this 99 second clock in in themselves. So people have a good feeling what 99 seconds are, for whatever reason. Yeah. But you, you have been listening to Cherry. Uh, we have prepared polls. After every 99 seconds, we, we can do a poll. Can can we show the poll? No, we cannot. Or let's yes. the, the, the question is every time, how do you feel? To what degree does the presented project emphasize involvement of consumers? So this is what we are talking about, and obviously we have selected them, but do you feel that they concentrate a lot on consumers? Still have to see the last slide for that, which I didn't have time to present. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <laughs> Damn. Okay. You can go ahead for a while. We we sketch it then and we, we bring it to the final session. You can go ahead while we Step to the next one. The yes. next one is the C cells. C cells project uh, represented by Ole Langnis. Um, Ole is from Germany. Uh, he is the, the owner also of a Ole Systems company. He, he is based in Stuttgart. And he specializes in smart grids, blockchain, sustainable development. And he also has a background in finance. I wonder why you have been 
uh, nominated Ole to present CSELS, but you will tell us. Do I have to present my own slides or do you No, no, I slides? show the slides that you have sent to us. Ludwig, actually, I'm not only staying in Stuttgart, but we are working in Stuttgart. As you certainly know, some of the Swabians, uh, 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 we have the reputation to work, not only to stay where we are. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, so that's you, so you know also why I, I was nominated, because I'm working in, in this field for about 30 years. Um, and uh, this was one of our the largest project actually we, we, we ever conducted, the CTELS project, it, it just finished. It involved uh, 58 partners, 84 million uh, euro total budget. Uh, it, what, we, what we did is we created 35 demonstration cells and I actually really liked the, uh, the, the, the presentation of Jerry because you had also this uh, six edge, uh, six corner shakes which we also used to uh, to uh, to show our approach uh, as a um, uh, showcase for the cellular energy system. So uh, 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 energy system which is participative and which is also uh, very diverse because these are the three features we believe are the 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 feature the characteristics of the energy system of the future. Really large scale. Uh, so in in total, 30 million people. Uh, was uh, theoretically uh, uh, affected. In, in practice, we involved some thousand people here in the, in the last uh, uh, four years. Um, what were our three main uh, uh, elements? It was uh, infrastructure information system, so basically uh, 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 digital backbone here. Um, then we have regional markets, which allows also on a on a on a, on a uh, uh, economic scale uh, the cells to interact within the cell, but also uh, without the cells uh, uh, in, in in between the cells and uh, the cells, as I said, the regional cells in itself. Next slide, please. Um, one there one no, example. There is no next slide, uh, oh. and your 99 seconds are gone anyway. Sorry. <laughs> Very good. Okay, fair. You, you will have other opportunities. Uh, can we can we ask for the quick reply on how much do you feel that C cells tackled the question on consumers? Okay. We will bring it back. No, there was sorry, I, I forgot. I forgot to show this one. Ole. Then I would have scored differently, I guess. Okay. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> then you would have scored differently. Sorry for that. Let's go to top up, huh? Esther, yes. do you want to introduce yes. Top-Up already? Yes, Thijs. Thijs is from uh, the Netherlands and he is assistant professor at the University of Groningen. And he's strongly interested in the drivers behind the individuals and group behaviors. Especially he focuses on the values and behavior change within the environmental and sustainability domain. Thijs, please. Thank you, Esther. Um, yes, yeah, so my name is Thijs. Uh, I'm representing the Top Up project. It's a uh, ERANET uh, smart energy systems, uh, well, actually the regional energy systems uh, project. Um, and Top Up stands for Top Down Energy Projects as uh, catalysts uh, for bottom up local energy initiatives. Um, it's a project which specifically focuses on two regional sites. So one is Groningen where I'm from, the other one is Copenhagen uh, in Denmark. And we also have partners from both countries or both regions. So uh, both the University of Groningen as well as the Danish Technical University is involved. And we have many different disciplines involved. So I'm representing psychology, environmental psychology specifically, which is specifically about uh, consumer perspectives, uh, motives, etc. But as already introduced, but we also have engineering as well as applied mathematics. And we think that this combination of disciplines is necessary to sort of understand the more integrated energy systems uh, in which we basically 
or, or of which we make basically use. Oh, you can go back to the previous slide. So where top of specifically focuses on this is sort of the interaction between top down initiated energy projects and bottom up initiatives. So what's happening in Groningen as well as in uh, Denmark is that there are a lot of top down organized uh, projects on. Uh, so get a bit confused of all the, the uh, slides and things popping up, but uh, so what it basically focuses on is, is this interaction between top up, uh, uh, top down initiated projects as well as bottom up initi uh, initiated projects. And in Groningen and Copenhagen, there are a lot of projects in the heat system uh, which are organized from the top down. And where we specifically look at is how these top down initiated projects can sort of facilitate, enable and motivate people to engage in more bottom up uh, energy projects. And I think I'm now over time, so uh, I should stop. We can skip this slide. Yeah. Be I think this sure is this also covered in many of the questions we will uh, uh, yeah. follow up on later. So follow up. Yes. But again, what have you heard? Have you heard a lot of emphasis on involvement of consumers, customers, citizens? We need a new poll. New poll, please. Thank you. Yes. If you study groups' behavior, it's uh, of course the customer cannot be neglected. Yes, that's true. And we can see that here in the score. Yes. And if you have a psychologist presenting it. Yes. Okay, but still, while, while you keep voting, let's go to the next one. The next one is the solar project, uh, will be presented by Thomas, Thomas Walter. Uh, he is from Germany. Uh, he is the, the head of a small ICT company. Is it small? I don't know exactly. Is it smart grid? But uh, he has a good view on the market design uh, because he lives of it. And, and they have been doing uh, a great project uh, in a small village in the middle of the Lake of Constance. Your turn, Thomas. Thank you, Ludwig. Well, it's not in the Lake Constance in the, on the shore, uh, <laughs> and I'm very happy that uh, uh, Ole presented sea cells because uh, Allensbach was the participation, uh, citizen participation uh, community of this project, one of them. And actually, we implemented there what the claim of sea cells is, which is a cell and a local market. So it just looks like a nice green residential development. Uh, you see the solar cells. Also, it's wooden construction uh, uh, in order to have uh, ecological building material. What you don't see, but what's in there is sector coupling. It's decarbonized heating, decarbonized mobility, electric vehicles, and also the use of electric appliances for uh, flexibility, uh, for, for, for stability and storage. Um, uh, if you go to the next slide, um, so basically what we implement, and uh, I'm not going to go through the complete slide, you can read it afterwards, but basically what we are implementing is what the commission asks for, which is a dynamic tariff. Uh, so the, all the devices react to the dynamic tariff, um, heat pumps charge when electricity is cheap, when PV is available, and uh, uh, the same to dishwashers and other devices, and this is the technology we are applying. We are finding out whether the system is in balance, whether the market price is correct, and if it is not, uh, we correct it to make it correct, and we use an old principle in measurement technology uh, to do this in real time. That means the price is updated every second. That means that even fridges and freezers can provide control power and stabilize the grid. And if I have more time, I will tell you more, but I probably don't. Exactly in 99 seconds. How did you do that? Thank you. It's your, it's your son. It's psychology. <laughs> okay, voting. How, to what degree did they work with and on people? Yes, and while we do the poll, we speed up. And um, let me introduce our next uh, panelist. It's Stefan Wilker. 
He's from our member state Austria and he's the head of energy and IT group at the Technical University of uh, Vienna, or Wien. Interoperability and prediction and coordination of renewable energy, uh, demand and supply are his fields of interest. And please, uh, Stefan, um, tell us about your project. Thank Sonder. you for the nice introduction. So, hi, my name is Stefan Wilke. Um, yes, I'm the project manager of the Aeronet Smart Energy System project uh, Sonder. Um, next slide, please. Um, you can see some hard facts about uh, our consortium and the international involved partners. Next slide, please. Um, together with our partners from Sweden and Switzerland, um, I guess you need to tap s some more um, Ah. Wrong version of the slide. Sorry. Okay, stop there. Um, together with our partners, we will uh, firstly achieve interoperability with the IES mythology. We will enable our market to grid communication. We test battery energy storage system control schemes, use graph based predictions on data from a Swiss city, enable an energy community with commercial and industrial members in a business district in the southern parts of Vienna. And we investigate the possibility for data centers for being members of such an uh, energy community. Being said, um, next slide. In Austria, our consumer and citizen involvement is highly important. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Something missing, sorry. Yes. Okay. Then, then uh, free speech. Being said, in in Austria, our consumer and citizen involvement is uh, for us highly important, and we see it as a necessary puzzle piece for the ambition climate goals. Um, we are currently in an ongoing survey to support our development of a planned co-creation workshop. And especially since Austria has just released their new law on the Renewable Energy Act, this will be a huge step uh, towards the possibility to involve citizens in energy communities. And this is for us an enabler and empowerment that is necessary to achieve these goals. Um, we involve uh, experts from various sectors, uh, including property and real estate developers uh, during this phase, and I'm happy to discuss it uh, and exchange thoughts on it in the upcoming discussion panel. Thank you. We have stolen your slide, but we have given you 10 more seconds. Is yeah. that fair? <laughs> <laughs> so, Paul, Paul, on how much did they concentrate on citizens, consumers, customers? That is, by the way, something that we will discuss, Esther. Why yes. do we talk about consumers, customers, citizens? Why do we make a distinction and so on? So, we will go like with these people, the people you know already. We go like asking these questions, more or less. So it's four blocks of questions. Uh, there is, I don't know how much time is left. Three quarters. Uh, yeah. Three quarters of an hour. So we have 10 minutes per block. Let's go. I think I switch off the slides here. Uh, is that fair? Because we don't need them at this point of time. We start asking people and if we feel like we should show something, we show something. But now you can put it to the gallery mode and it makes it a bit easier to discuss. Can you start, Esther? Yes. So the first question is what drivers consumers' behavior uh, to be a good citizen? And um, yeah, we, we can, Thijs from Top Up, he, he, you stressed um, the top down plus bottom up approach. But how much uh, top uh, down do we need and how much top up do we need? Can you, maybe you can have a brief answer. <laughs> It's a very difficult question. I think it's very context specific. So it depends on what the situation you're in. It depends on what kind of energy system you're looking at. Uh, so it's a, I think it's a tricky question. So the situation or the context we're focusing on, so the Groningen and the uh, Copenhagen districts, uh, there there is 
quite a big top-down initiated uh, energy project in the heat system because it requires, it's basically covering the whole region and uh, or, or large parts of the region. I think in such cases, it can be quite important to have these top-down initiated energy projects. But what you often notice is that within these kind of top-down uh, initiated energy projects, it's often forgotten that people also play a role. So how they respond to it, whether they accept it, whether they adopt it, whether they use these things in the right way, that's often something which is neglected. So it's often decided, implemented, and then the next step is also taking into consideration what people will do with it. And it can be within that specific energy system or within that specific project, but it can also stimulate or motivate or might enable people uh, to initiate their own projects. So for instance, it might become more beneficial to start an energy community or electricity energy community when this heat provision or heat generation requires a lot of electricity. So in that way, we're sort of studying these kind of interactions. But I think coming back to your question, I think it's a tricky question because it, it depends on so many factors. Yes. I see. Can, can I ask Thomas? Thomas, just recently remember we were in, in this city in Baden-Württemberg where you gave a presentation uh, and we, we, we were also talking about what Martin top down and we said, OK, Berlin maybe doesn't behave like we would them putting these directives in place. But you said that you can also promote it bottom up in on a municipal level. Uh, what was the role of the municipality in this case of Allensbach? Well, the city of uh, uh, Allensbach or the citizens better because it's just 7000 people. Um, already 10 years ago decided that they had to do something against climate change. And they set up a task force, which was uh, just uh, citizens working in their spare time on the subject. And they actually drove the theme, how can we do this? Okay. And they identified uh, the, the uh, decarbonization opportunities. It's not just putting up PV, that's standard in Germany, but uh, decarbonizing heating and, and and then the next question came up how can we orchestrate all this how can we work and that's where you need professionals so you had three parties you had the citizens you had the community which actually uh, allowed it enabled it and you had professionals who then came up with the ideas to do it and there are niches where you can do it so in germany we do it uh, we just treat uh, the equipment like customer uh, equipment so you can either uh, uh, remote control them by Google or Apple or with an intelligent way the way we do it. <laughs> Google and Apple is very intelligent. I'm not saying they're not intelligent, but they are not doing it for energy. They are doing it for convenience and we are doing it for energy and, and uh, transformation. In, in, in your case, you involved citizens, people that yes. built uh, their new homes. OK, this was very residential. Yes, but yes, we discussed that. I mean, we do not only talk about these uh, residential consumers and, and customers. We also talk about businesses and maybe yes. small businesses. I don't yes. know if they have been involved in Allensbach as well, but definitely, Stefan, you involved them, right? In in the Sonder project. Yes, exactly. I mean, the, the, uh, Approaching them is a little bit harder in these times. Yeah, you cannot knock on the yeah. door. Um, <clears throat> but uh, basically, we uh, in, in Austria we see a huge interest that they uh, want to 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 move forward. But sometimes it's also to resolve some question marks. Might they be uh, from a legal perspective? Uh, what are they allowed to do? And also they are sometimes afraid of what will be coming up towards them. But basically, at least in our um, experience, they are moving towards it uh, to, to make a change. And when you talk to, uh, to to business people, you know me, I'm an executive of a small company. I, I have to look after money, of course. But is it something else that drives uh, executives of companies? Um, I, I would say so. So um, it's. Of course, also uh, some part of the image that is okay. uh, is transported through the the company, and also how they are seen when when they approach so somebody else that um, they care about the environment, that it's a yeah. sustainable business. Here he, here he is nodding. It, what's your experience with the company people? You, need you to have to switch, switch on. on. Yeah. I know. Uh, am I allowed to intervene? Is that sure. the format? Sure, 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 sure. No. Uh, we have been looking at uh, objectives of different kind of stakeholders. Eh? 
and of course for companies uh, and executives, first of all, there's of course a financial aspect. They don't want to pay more in general, in Belgium at least. We're quite reluctant to do that. <laughs> but um, then it's not about actually being green. It's having the green image was clearly put mm -hmm. as a first uh, criterion Besides being really green, eh, it's having a green image towards the customers. It's something okay. that came often back. Just as a small comment on that. Before I ask a question uh, to, to to Ole, can can we start the poll uh, that we have foreseen uh, on the consumers? The poll number five. Can we show that? Now I have lost it. Is it on? Uh, beside, yes, it is on. Beside money, what drives people to actively promote the energy transition? We have to enter a word there. Okay, so what we heard, it's of course it's always money, but it, it's something beyond money as well. So give us some ideas, some buzzwords. What is it that can drive people towards, say, climate friendly behavior or to actively promote energy transition which is more self more than same direction responsibility image while, while we do that let, let's go on for a while uh, question to ole uh, you did that in baden-württemberg this CSAS things and the, the swabian this is a swabian region the swabian ethnics Ethics, you know, ethnic ethnologies, is, is it that? The people, uh, they are said to be very money conscious. Uh, what, what is your experience there? What, what, have they been very conscious about the money or what, was there some other drivers to go cellular or community approaches? Yeah. Um, uh, I think um, when, when we talk about uh, commercial uh, 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 customers, um, that, that to add to what, what Jerry said, I think what drives here people is really if they already have assets, they, they, you know, commercial leaders are known for constantly thinking what, how can they commercialize further their existing assets. And so mm -hmm. the, the, the energy value of, of an asset like a building um, is, is interesting to them. So, so I think this is really something where they start to think how they can really uh, get money out, out of that. So this is clearly money driven, but it doesn't need to be uh, immediate return. This is, I think they, they have a different thinking here as uh, compared to, 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 to the, 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 the daily investments. Uh, when it comes to, to private customers, um, I think take, being part of the movement we, 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 we experience is very important. So if you feel that uh, you, are, your neighbors are doing the same thing, and you are contributing to uh, to, to to a larger movement. You are contributing to energy transition. Then people really like to participate, and they are not so money conscious, I would say. But still, money, I think it would be uh, it needs to be at a at a what you would call a hygienic level, right? I mean, you you mm -hmm. do not expect to really lose money in the end, or you do not want to encounter unfair or okay, recognized unfair conditions, right? You don't want to lose money, but it's other drivers that make people yeah. move. And, and I, I, let, 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 let me add on the on the unfair conditions. I mean, if, if, if there's a feeling that if you if you uh, feed into the grid for three cents per, uh, per, per kilowatt hour, but you have to pay 30 cents per kilowatt hour, it feels like unfair. It might okay. be it it it, 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 uh, it might be justifiable from the political level, right? From the economical level, yeah. but from the customer perspective, it's totally unfair. And nobody could understand this. Esther, shall we go yeah, to right. the next question? Yes, I think we should uh, do that. Thank you very much. Um, the next question is: What motivates consumers to become prosumers? So the incentives to trigger self-supply and storage. Shall we do a quick poll on that? We, we have prepared a poll number seven, I think. Can, can we do that up front and then start talking? Yes, we can do that. So, so we said this is various ways of getting to cooperative 
actions, you go microgrid, you go citizen energy communities, you go virtual power plants, other collective actions. So this is the understanding that maybe when people join forces, this is more motivating to do prosumer stuff. But what is your feeling? So citizen energy communities is something, obviously. Maybe while you keep going, can, can I ask Jan? Sure. Jan, uh, this, this question that we are tackling here is like we assume and it implies uh, that it's a good idea that many more people own their electricity generators, storages, uh, and use their own energy. Yeah. And then we call them prosumers. Is that desirable at all? I would say prosumership themselves has a good and a dark side. If it's distributed, renewable, and mostly self or locally consumed, it does support the energy transformation and CO2 reduction. But it can support um, as well in stabilizing the grid and replace fossil and nuclear energy generation for a bit. So it, it's really helpful. But like we have seen in the uh, German Mittelstand, um, we see a continuous acceleration trend of the industry companies disconnecting themselves from the grid via independency um, energy supply. And using only the grid and the common uh, infrastructure as backup scenarios. And that leads to the fact that the non-prosumers will pay the grid costs. Okay. So we create a divide between the people who cannot, organizations who cannot participate as prosumer because they don't have a rooftop where they can build PV or they don't have any gener generation access, cannot participate in this prosumer scenarios. That's why we need additional participation models for consumers like mm -hmm. shared energy infrastructure ownerships via pension funds or micro PPAs or um, communities, which as well include pure consumers within their, let's say, mm -hmm. customer suites, like Zanon did with their scenario for batteries yeah. at home. So what, what, would get, what we got from the poll is also that this energy community thing could be something. Yes, so we hold that. And um, but if we, we look at uh, Cherry from the Renaissance uh, project, uh, you also did a survey among your stakeholders. And could you share a bit of those results? And uh, yeah, are there any recommendations to other projects or programs? Uh, what, what would you consider? Or do, do we still need to research if it comes to, to that? Um, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, we definitely still need to do research. Um, I think, uh, of course, it's a small stake group. Stake group. Okay. Yet, and there is indeed clearly a willing to join. Um, I think we are losing. Uh, the citizens are. Jerry, your connection is not so well. Okay, can you speak very close to the microphone? Jerry, can you speak close to the microphone, please? Uh, I think no. We I think we lost him completely. He will be back. Let's let us let us let's go ahead. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe from top up. Let, let's switch to top up uh, because um, you investigated this uh, a lot. And what I wonder is, what makes people? Um, what does people like, and what drives them crazy? And yeah, about what specifically? Because I think it depends a lot on on uh, what topic we're specifically. So, is it energy communities, or is it other energy measures projects? In general, what does the psychologist say? What, what drives <laughs> people when they buy uh, a car, when they participate in energy communities, 
what what from a psychologist's point of view, what are the key drivers? Can you not well, not yeah, a lecture, think, but some sentences? Well, what can so be I think the key drivers are already so we sort of discussed them already uh, when discussing the previous question. So I think and also I think the poll nicely illustrates key drivers of people, their behavior. So well, you already mentioned financial aspects. Um, I'm not entirely sure whether, and I think it's also in line with what Alda said, whether it's a driver or whether it's a main barrier. So it, it relates more to what drives people crazy, that things are expensive, that it might have uh, a lot of consequences for the actions they need to take, uh, may, may uh, interfere with habits or um, well, things they typically do, so that it interfere with the common practices of them. Um, but what often drives people are those, uh, well, what we often find is that sustainability motors, but also social motors, which are sort of reflected in these um, these polls as well. So I think what, what the two most voted for communities or initiatives show is sort of that there is a group attached to it. So it connects people or it can connect people okay. with each other, and that can be a strong driver of these kind of things. So people appreciate doing these things together, and that might be an important reason to participate in these kind of projects. Ludwig, you, you want well, to say well, something? Can, I mean, you, you, you are doing a project and, and you are, I would say, one of the few projects that have uh, sociologists, psychologists in it. We will come back to that one. But what can projects like the top up contribute to the knowledge? So what drives them crazy? What makes them move? What, what, what type of insight can be gained from such projects? I, I think it's uh, these kind of, of projects are really important to understand how people respond to projects or respond to new changes in the energy system. So uh, I think knowing more about these drivers also enables you to uh, to generate expectations, how people might respond to something you initiate within a neighborhood or within a community. It, 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 it gives you an understanding of what brings people together on these kind of things and also what makes them willing to, for instance, reduce their energy use or move it to other times. So in, I think in that sense, and I think it's, uh, we don't have the time to discuss all these factors here now, but I think it, it can in that way contribute a lot. And I think it also contributes a lot to uh, understanding people, their energy behaviors. So um, for instance, yeah. what's, what's often done in, in more technical disciplines, so also our engineering partners, they focus on uh, control uh, uh, algorithms, optimization problems, but yeah. of course people also play a very big role within these energy systems they model. So we can also give insights in how people may respond to certain things, how people behave in certain ways, for what kind of reasons, and whether this differs for different populations. Okay. And by that also improve uh, how these energy systems are modeled or improve these kind of algorithms. Yeah, Ludwig. I see the hand, I see Anna's hand up. Anna. Yeah, sorry that I'm just too impatient and waiting for my turn to intervene, but um, think I, I was really carefully listening to the different uh, panelists and one important thing from the psychological point of view is um, this citizen empowerment, so that citizens understand that, um, that, that they have many options and one of the many options is uh, actively participating in in en I mean energy in terms of self consumption uh, to get into an energy community together with other members etc. So um, I think this psychological point of view is very important and this was also one of the uh, thinkings behind uh, policy when we integrated uh, renewable energy communities into legislation is to is to give um, the, the citizens to make them uh, like as the, they're, they are the important parts to help for this energy transition, because otherwise, uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to make a point on, on, on this um, as from a, the policy point of view. And Anna, as, as I see Thomas' hand, and I, Thomas, I, I, I would ask you a question. I mean, now we are on this municipal level. Uh, Anna said something about empowerment. Uh, how? How important is it when we go this bottom up, or what what does it mean to go bottom up? And 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 the and the question to Anna would then be: Shouldn't we do more research on such bottom up muni municipal empowerment stuff? I haven't seen so much in the Horizon Europe, for example, at least not in the energy part of it. So how do we get to that? Yeah. How do we get more knowledge on that? Well, first, before I answer your question, I put up my hand because in hindsight, the German EEG was very smart because it was like a, a savings account. People could put money in solar energy without risk with a moderate return. So they got used to actually being producer. 
And now it gets more risky and they now have to become more active. I, I think that 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 could be uh, uh, just one lesson. But coming to your current question, I think it is absolutely vital because uh, the the uh, even if you look at, at at German policies, it is not because industry or politicians came up with the idea that renewable energy was a good thing. It was because people drove them, uh, actually forced them uh, um, to to because they just voted for for green parties, as you <laughs> just see at the moment in, in in Germany. So so I think um, particularly if the Commission is is looking for citizens' involvement. Uh, yeah. There is something which in, in typical companies is called the, the clay layer, the middle management. <laughs> and, and if you want to change a company, you have to take to, talk to employees. Uh, and that's what many people don't do in companies. Mm -hmm. And that's why change is so difficult. So I think it's the same with companies. Uh, if you take a new direction, it's the same with society. Uh, people are there. They want to do something, but it's too complicated for them to do. That's okay. that's the, what, the simple... What can we do about it? I mean... The, so we need two things. We need regular. Not what we what we need, Thais. This is preventing. It is something which is called uh, in, 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 it's called a real uh, lab funding for not just only research, but for projects where people actually live in, um, okay. uh, and that should scale. Um, it is regulation, and we still yeah. have a challenge in transforming European regulation in national law, particularly Germany, as everybody knows. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Uh, right. You know, when I tell that we are actually doing dynamic tariffs, uh, which is, uh, I think, uh, something well known in Brussels, and you talk about this in Berlin, they say, what are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so so I think there should be a much, a much closer, uh, 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 you know, connection in the complete value chain or the complete uh, decision chain. Um, I hope this answers your question. I see, the hand. I see ties, but I, I, at the end, I would ask Anna, I mean, when, when we look at this, bottom-up municipal world, we have to look at spatial planning and involvement and so on. Is that an issue in DG Energy? But first, first, Thais. Well, I'm also fine if Anna responds first, so go ahead. You have a specific <laughs> question, so maybe it's easier to do it that way. Well, no, I mean, I'm, I'm answering from the policy point of view. Um, the member states still need to um, finish implementation of, of, of legislation, right? So we will see, we will from, from Brussels, from the Commission point of view, start to see um, impact really after, well, it will be after after um, June this year when we will start to see implementation and then it will take some time because member states and and, and they have to go through down to the to the municipal level, they need to implement an enabling framework promoting this type of communities. So this needs to trickle down to really uh, municipal level. How it will be done, we will still need to observe it. Uh, so there, I can't give you an answer for the time being. But nevertheless, we encourage member states uh, to exchange in terms of best practices where these models are implemented in a successful manner. So in terms of showing case studies, best practices um, in any type of events, workshops, whatever, um, should be encouraged and should be done like, like today, for example. Yeah, thank you. Can we, can, can we link, uh, Thais, Esther, shall we link Thais' answer right away to our third block? Yes, uh, we can do that. <laughs> yeah. yes. We have to hurry, Thais. I have yes. to hurry, okay. Third, third block is about collective. Yes, does, about does collective action bring us any further? And, and, and I think you answered a bit on that. We, we, we learned that if you do island projects, people live on an island, there's sort of togetherness on the island. So there obviously it works somehow. But how, to what degree is this togetherness thing uh, important or even only possible uh, to implement on a, say, local level, municipal level? Can we achieve that at all? So, so you're asking me? Yeah, yeah, you are yes, my only yeah. psychologist. <laughs> no, <here>. I think <laughs> it's definitely a very important factor. And I think indeed what you just said about the island. So what you typically see there is that there's a very strong identity and people have a clear idea about what it means to be part of this community. And there are certain values, certain norms attached to these identities. And I think in these communities, these things are really clear and clearly communicated. Also because many people know each other and, and, and it's quite relatively tight community. 
so I think in that sense, uh, that also partly explains why on, on such islands, these kind of initiatives work that well. You can, of course, create similar kind of, so for instance, in a neighborhood it might also be that people know each other. Uh, so on that level, you might also organize something. You can also think about, for instance, uh, within an organization with employees um, to work together on these kind of projects and form communities. So, and I think in, in, in such, um, such context, this community can be very important, one, in bringing people together, but also showing what's appropriate to do within that group. So stressing certain environmental values, stressing certain environmental goals, and that that's an important part of that specific mm -hmm. community. And there's also a lot of research which shows that particularly stressing these aspects, also the communal aspects, so what you can, if you participate in these kind of behaviors, when you join these kind of initiatives that also has benefits for this community, that it can be a very strong incentive for people to join such projects and participate in these projects. And maybe one more thing related to the previous discussion, I think it's also important to note that not everybody wants to have a very active role. So within energy communities, it's relatively active. I think also uh, what Thomas mentioned was about people saying that change needs to happen, which then sort of is initiated from a more, so it's initiated, the, the voice, it, people say it from the bottom up, but then uh, a company, an, uh, a government takes it over and start initiating these kind of things. And I think it's, it's really critical to look at what kind of ways we should consider uh, in involving people. So it can be these really active forms, these communities, for instance, but I think in, in those communities, it's typically uh, people who are already quite strongly involved in the topic who participate, but also other forms like uh, letting people participate in the decision making around energy projects, involving their ideas, what they find important within the development of these kind of things, that that's also critical to consider. What do you, what do you say people are different? <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, have you seen Esther? A theory is back. Shall, shall we give it a try again? Yes, please. Thierry, can you say something? Hello. Now you are back. <laughs> Is the, what, what was it that you wanted to ask, Thierry? <laughs> yes. Jerry did a survey amongst his stakeholders or the stakeholders. And um, mm -hmm. do you have any uh, recommendations uh, to uh, uh, for other uh, projects or programs? What would they consider? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Uh, in the, in um, in the former question about what mot motivates consumers to become prosumers, I think you did a survey among your stakeholders. And uh, I would wonder, can you share the results? And are we there... A, we a, okay. What, can what, you what, hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you, yes. Go ahead. What, what, what we still do, what yeah, do we it, need it, to research if it comes to, to, to this question? What motivates consumers? What what came out of your sir? <laughs> I'd rather sit in this well. <laughs> yeah, you can hear me roughly. Um, yes. I mean, people who are aware of the situation are willing. No, I will all over again. <laughs> or or did okay, this go, you go to the chat? Tell us in the chat what you have to tell us, please. Yes. Yes. Unfortunately, we don't make it. Maybe we can go on. Yes, uh, yes. Thijs said a lot about it. And uh, what I was wondering, if it comes to C cells, uh, C cells did some as some experience with the new energy system and the traditional uh, system. And I want to ask Ole if he could articulate a bit more about how the customer is involved in this new system. So no, yeah, as they said, it's important, it's, it's nice, it's good, but how? It's a how question. Esther, can, can, can you repeat, there was just a noise. Can you please repeat the question, sorry. Oh, can you articulate how the customer is more involved in this energy system we're we talking about, this new energy system of today, yes. compared to the traditional energy system? Right, right. I, I think um, it's 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 um, what 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 we uh, experience and and recognize is if people uh, um, can really understand also what 
what the benefit is of getting into a community, then they want, want also to join, right? I mean, so if you, for instance, are in a real estate where you uh, uh, where uh, there's a, for parking and uh, there's a parking ground and you want all all want to charge the EV guilds, if you have a energy management system which allows uh, really to manage this without additional costs and which put no, no stress to to the grid, then people see the benefit of doing a collaborative action, right? So uh, this is something where then people also like to join and uh, see the, the uh, immediate benefit. And I think it's also a, a, a question of uh, consumer sovereignty. I mean, we talked a lot about political uh, uh, decision power and 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 uh, the, the obstacles we encounter really that 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 consumers can and, and, and citizens can uh, take their uh, energy venture in their own hands, but uh, actually um, the, 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 this is also a question of consumer sovereignty, right? I mean, you would not also ask uh, car drivers to follow uh, uh, the the rules of the uh, of the train system really to to drive their own asset, right? So it's about sovereignty about the assets, and then they are willing also to invest. And um, I think this is a really uh, a crucial point, and that's also why we talked a lot about aut autonomy, right? I mean, decision power on um, what you do uh, with your uh, uh, yes. energy and, and how you get your energy. Yeah. yeah but if you look at, at your project, you, you talk about how did you did it? Yes, it's important, but how? How, how did you? Is it the architecture of how? It's 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 in on on one hand of course it's uh, you 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 create frameworks like for instance a local energy market right where you can uh, uh, market your 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 self generated excess uh, uh, energy or market it into into uh, uh, for the for the grid operator it's also technology right I mean if you don't have the devices which allows you to communicate. Uh, uh, then uh, you 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 can't really participate. So so technology is really key, but it's also a driver, right? And and we we saw that once you have implemented these technologies, people start to think, oh, what what else can you can you do with it? And I think this is also a very good message because we are not only depending on the political drivers to force into energy transition, but we already have more and more means in hands where people just want to do things right if you have an e-vehicle and suddenly you you're starting to think oh what can i do else with it can can i support also the grid in vehicle to grid technology right if i have a storage how can i support this right if i have a smart meter system how can i uh, support here how can i make extra money how can i be part of the community so is i think that, that's something the that technology drives is very important well, is that really something that drives people? I mean, we have heard that from Thais, but, but there's, there's this question of these regional marketplaces. I mean, do obviously I want to use, many want to use their own energy, this is nice, but do they want to sell the energy on a local marketplace to the neighbor? Is that a real need? I mean, this is not only a question to Ole, but to the others. I mean, I, I could I could just confirm. Yes, it's a need. It's 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 a it's a will. I mean, yeah. whether it is a need that that it, it it would be a question like, do we need trains and cars, right? I mean, yeah. the train system is very good system. Why do we need cars? But obviously, people also drive cars. So this is not a real question we need to answer, right? If people like it, they do it. But maybe maybe that's different also from from region to region to region and and we have to wrap up this third section is the can can I ask Anna a question I mean we have been talking about the the Europe of regions when you say lost stress that uh, and I I think also Nikos uh, what what is your feeling I mean do do we know enough about the different needs the different drivers or also the different benefits of such collective approaches in the various regions of Europe. I mean, we, we know that not everybody takes it up as as others do. Is is there a difference and can how can we cope with that? I mean, um, for us, I mean, there will be differences in, in implementation and then how, how member states do it uh, on, on local level. For us, I mean, differences, uh, they are intrinsic no, to, 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 to the European Union. So for us, it's more important, and sorry that I speak more from the point of view of, of, uh, of, yeah. the, of a policy uh, officer or representative, 
for, for us is more the right uh, implementation of, of the legal framework. So what we have done and we think that we have left open to member states uh, to introduce some like, uh, I mean, uh, differences in terms of uh, how things work in their particular countries or regions. Um, so there is some flexibility with what we have in the legislation. So we will see at the end how this is implemented. Um, and we will react, of course, uh, first we will do a very boring, maybe uh, le legislative uh, exercise, but then we have also to react to uh, uh, citizens complain if things are not working uh, properly. And, and so we, we can also see if things need to be reviewed. Um, but for the time being, um, differences will be there, but the important thing is, is for us the right implementation of the, of the EU legislation. Thanks. We, we are getting a lot of inputs. I'm, I'm a bit following the chat. Esther, have you seen something that we have to bring? Some agree? Yes, I, I saw a, a report we can uh, read afterwards. And also, yeah. like Rebecca uh, uh, tipped on a survey about renewable energy production and also the some about energy resilience. We will we will we will take that on later. Uh, I think. Let's go to our last block. We have 10 minutes left. Yes, 10 minutes left. Thank you. Thank you for all your input. We, we will look at it uh, after the session. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Ole. Thank you. Uh, thank you all. Um, the next, the, the, the last question is, how does the project or how did the project combine technical, economic and social research? And how do you get that customer or the energy community? How do you get that involved? And um, yeah, uh, Jan from ATIPSnet, how can digitalization help to empower the customer? Dif different ways, of course, to, to achieve this. One is the digitalization can empower the customers with data and context. So but that must result in information for the customer to create more knowledge on their side and understanding. We haven't discussed as, at all in the debate how we engage with this customer. So what's the interface? What's the user interface? What kind of media are we using to exchange data and give customers visibility or control? So that's clearly something digital reason can do and we know it from other fields like in the telco space or in the uh, new financial services where we have seen that the systems can be established. And then if these customers build up this knowledge, then they can choose their options, how they would like to participate within this energy systems and what kind of services they may would like to use. Yeah, Jan, you are not only ETIP, you are also a company, uh, Greencom. Uh, how, how many psychologists, sociologists are employed in your ICT company? None. Why? Funding? <laughs> Depends. Oh. Yeah. The question is isn't, more, isn't, more. That, isn't that a deficiency in the system? Yeah, maybe, yes, absolutely. So, absolutely right that we need different knowledge in the overall architecture of the uh, customer centric solutions. And we may have to go back to the drawing board and have to re engineer a little bit the customer value in our solutions. Okay, or, or you can cooperate in the networks. So sorry for this yeah. aggressive. Question. And of course, you learn <laughs> you learn from your customers in the projects. Yeah. So, so like the local community we have built up south of Munich, that was by direct selling to this customer in the three villages. And based on this interaction, you learn from the customers what they like, what they don't like, what they understand or not. In other projects, for example, in smart city districts. You don't have access to these customers, so it's very hard to get them on board. Can I? Yes. One, maybe if, if you allow me, then you can wrap up. Is that one, one more question? Because uh, I, I always look at these businesses, these small businesses, yes. and, and these decision makers. I would ask this question to Stefan, but probably you wanted to ask it as well, Esther. Stefan, how can we manage that we better understand the real? drivers for the business people. I can tell you as a head of a company, I'm not only driven by money. How, how can we do, how can we involve these people more? How can we better understand what what is it behind the cost discussion? 
Well, what we did in, in, in the Thunder project is we, we uh, approached a, well, a local, um, how to say, a company supporting uh, organization. It's the Vienna Business District and they uh, informed the people and also uh, get involved the, comp uh, the companies. So uh, they organize workshops, normally f physical, of course, and um, they also uh, tackle this new these topics that need to be tackled. Um, uh, but it's it's a little bit more uh, like a, the, the, the the thing uh, or the question of persons that uh, that are involved for example in in another national project the uh, a lot of 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 the decisions or the, the drive uh, to to involve the uh, citizens is, is from the mayor from there okay and it's his okay. his topic to drive it forward and the people accept it uh, and support it yes thank you Unfortunately, there is only a few minutes left, East, and we have so many open questions. We discussed the week what we wanted to learn. Huh? We have one choice. What, what, what is our last choice, Esther? One question. Now, maybe a question. If people already see now what we should research better, what are the gaps in what, what we heard and in the project oh. we did? Please put it in the chat. So everybody can, can, can do that themselves. And maybe in, in the meanwhile, uh, Ludwig, we can maybe go to the, the last uh, poll question. Yeah. Yeah, when, okay. when, when we said uh, Europe is different, people, regions are different. Uh, now we have quite a spread over the countries. I don't know how many countries are represented, but 10, 15 at least. Uh, can we please get information in the poll? Is it open already? Please? Can you just put one, two words? Uh, what is the main research gap, or you can call it need, in your country? So in, or say in your region. Yeah. So just please give us some hints. These will go to the development of the next uh, implementation plans, roadmaps, and so on. Leave us that hint. Uh, and while you are doing that, I think we should give a last chance to our representatives of ETIP and, and the Commission, right? Is the Anna, what, do, what was it that you, I, I don't know if you learned something, but what was it that you heard and that you would say was interesting in this session? And maybe the same question to Jan and then the two of you, you can wrap up the session until 12. The two of us, okay. I may take uh, yeah the, the floor now. Um, well, I mean, my main takeaway again. I mean, we were focusing on on citizens, on on on, on empowering them, on, on on also on helping them to accept and to on, and to learn um, why why they need to be part of this uh, energy transition, why they need to start participating. In, in energy communities. So this is this combination. My main takeaway is this combination between psychology, really uh, learning um, uh, to understand uh, drive, what is driving uh, us, the citizens, and then also making them understand maybe that the whole engineering behind it, because it's, it's not only you need to understand why you need to get involved and then also a little bit the nitty gritty. What, what does it mean uh, to, to put a solar panel on, on your roof um, uh, technically? And, and, and so this combination between technology um, systems uh, and also psychology uh, and then putting this together and uh, so that everybody's kind of um, yeah satisfied uh, understanding what they are engaging into so yeah I don't know if this wraps it up that right. wraps it up a bit thank you because I have to give a presentation in an hour from now and wrap it up thanks for that input Anna <laughs> one, one final say from Jan as our e-tip sort of host. <laughs> what shall I say in the next session? What did we learn, we from ETIP? 
I agree to Anna. We, ha we have to uh, research further how we can hold interest with our citizens over a long time. It's not a one-time shot. So we have to engage them, um, and we didn't discuss this, uh, the communication models with these customers. We make them more clever. That means we have to, let's say, feed knowledge to the community that they understand really what's happening in this energy transformation and what kind of offerings they could use. And of course, we shouldn't left people behind. Renewable energy should be affordable. Uh, energy poverty should not be tolerated. And that's it from our side, a summary. And we have quite some indication, some buzzwords. Thanks to everybody. It's 12 o'clock and we sort of made it, Esther. Thanks to yes, everybody. Yes, yes. Thank you all for being brief and talking fast and, <laughs> and articulated. And we see you for the wrap up. Uh, I hope you know how to get there. Mm -hmm. uh, you find it on your access card. Uh, meet you there at 10 past 12. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Ludwig, are, are we staying here or? Yes, I think the two of us, we can stay here and prepare this final presentation. Huh? Yes. Thanks, Thijs. Good input. <laughs> so who else is around? I will check the, the chat. Dan Dan Daniela, can you make sure that uh, Esther and me are alone now in the session? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Hold on a second. You are not alone yet. I mean, you 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 can stay. So if you don't trust the two of us, but <laughs> <laughs> I have to stay. <laughs> Otherwise, the meeting will end. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, you're, you're alone. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was writing, so I could not participate so much. No, you did. Okay. I mean, I mean, it's difficult. I mean, if if you do it alone, it's much easier to steer it. But I, I think we did a great job. Yes, it went well.